All right, welcome back, guys. Today we're going to be talking about a couple different things, but it's going to be these two items right here. Now, these are the knockoffs of the Unity risers uh, that they make. Um, this one is made by the company, I, for lack of better, I don't really know how to pronounce it, but it's P H O K I N G, Foking, I think. <laughs> which is an ironic name. I hope they did that on purpose. Um, the other one is this, which is, I don't remember, I believe that one, yeah. This one here is made by Watson, um, which if you are familiar with Airsoft copies of stuff, you'll be familiar with that brand. Um, the other one that I have here is made by somebody else that's on Amazon. I don't remember the name, but I'll put a link down below. But what I will say is the one on Amazon has a different size mount up here which i believe is for the shorter like fatter eotech knockoff not for this one that's up here so the one and let me just show you what eotech knockoff i'm talking about um, because i have the box for it right here and if you hear uh, my son in the background well he's getting fed right now so here is the it's a g33 uh clone and i actually bought two of these and then two of these mounts because I wanted to verify because I was having issues with fitment initially. And the reason why I bought two initially is because I bought one and it was this one off Amazon because I wanted to be able to return it, which I still plan on returning this one. But I wanted to show you this one just to kind of compare the two and just to kind of get a size sample of a couple different, you know, ones to see if one maybe had problems because this one had bad reviews on Amazon versus eBay is where I got that uh, Unity magnifier knockoff or the riser itself. And I kind of want to just try out a couple different things to figure out which company made the best one or if they were all the exact same. So I kind of did a little bit of trial and error um, ordering a bunch of different ones for you so you don't have to and so you can kind of see which one is the best to order from and best combination to order. Now I will say both of these I ordered from the same company on eBay and I'll tag all this stuff down below. I believe all of these including the ones on Amazon are going to be the exact same. I haven't noticed a difference uh, between these two and looking at the ones that are on Amazon, they look identical except for this one actually says EOTech on the side, which if that matters to you, you know, there you go. Um, if that doesn't matter to you, you can order a slightly cheaper one on Amazon. So whether or not that one's as good as these, I don't know, but I just figured I would mention that. Um, obviously, as you can tell, it does say EOTech on here and I'll do a review of the magnifier separately, but so far it's holding zero. I've only put probably 50 rounds through this rifle with the magnifier on top. Um, now it's just kind of hold zero. And then I also slap the snot out of it, you know, opening and closing, you know, doing this a whole bunch of times with the magnifier on there and it hasn't lost zero. So as of right now, the magnifier, I'd say is probably going to be okay. Um, cause it hasn't shifted, but again, I'll do a review on it specifically here in the future. Um, but this mag, so this mount, so again, no one likes spending $250 on a Unity Tactical uh, mount. And I can't say I blame them because I didn't want to spend that either. And really, I just kind of wanted to play around with this and see. And since I already owned this Unity knockoff for the uh, for the aim point or for the Hollow Sun, you know, depending on what you have on there, I figured I might as well order this and just kind of see because I would like the I, I like the idea of having a magnifier on all my guns, even this one, which is set up specifically for home defense. Um, but I figured this would give me a good test bed and just to make a good video. All right, so on this riser, I've made kind of a short video. Well, I have say short video. I've made a video review talking about different height risers, and I kind of talked about this one already, but one thing I will mention again is the screws that come with this uh, mount uh, do not work with, well, really it doesn't work with itself um, because the screws that it comes with are tapered, you know, kind of they, the, you have the head up top and it's kind of like a triangle. Then it goes down into the shaft of the screw versus um, it doesn't have a tapered section cut out of, you know, milled out of the top right here that inter interfaces with the uh, red dot. So just know with whatever red dot you use on top of this mount, you're going to have to screw, use the screws that come with the red dot. Do not use the screws that come with the mount because they don't interface with anything. So I don't know if that was just an oversight of my specific model, but that is an issue. So again, it's not really a big deal because you can use the screws that come with the, uh, the optic itself. So that's kind of a moot point. Um, Red actually liked this enough where he bought one as well. And as far as I know, he hasn't had any issues out of his. If that changes, I'll let you know. But it's a block of aluminum. I don't see why you'd have any problems. I have not used the backup iron sights on this. Um, I haven't even sighted them in yet. I don't really care. At some point, I don't see how... Um, 
Well, at some point I will sight them in, but I don't see how that would really move because there is clickable detents on the rear sight. The front sight post, I just moved completely out of the way since I have this one up here. So as far as fit and finish on this one here, I haven't seen any problems whatsoever. Um, it seems solid. I have, again, I haven't put a ton of rounds through this thing. Maybe, maybe 150 to 200 rounds, somewhere around there. It's not a lot, but that would be enough to at least notice um, anything loosening and, you know, kind of shifting or anything on the base kind of coming apart or something. And since nothing has happened, again, it's a solid chunk of aluminum. There's only so much that can go wrong. The screws haven't come loose, um, and you can lock tight them if you're super worried about it. I didn't, and they still didn't come loose. My optic hasn't come loose at all, and everything fit and finish wise is fine. It's clamped onto the rail, didn't have any problems with that. And I'll take all this stuff off so you can see it here in a second without the rifle, but I just kind of wanted to show you um, what it looked like on here. All right, so this out of the way, again, I've already kind of done a review, so I'm not gonna hit on that super hard. Um, this one right here, this mount itself, um, let me talk about the one I got off Amazon, and then I'll talk about the one I got off eBay and kind of a comparison between the two. So this one, again, was the Amazon. Hopefully it'll focus on here. And one thing you'll notice is, I don't know if you can see down in here. Let me grab a flashlight. All right, hopefully this is not too light. I'm going to be using this Cyansky light that I just did a review on. Uh, pro tip, if you, if you uh, want a really, really high candela light that's fantastic, this one right here is what you want to get. But anyway, so down in here, uh, you can see that little for lack of better words, right here at the end of my thumb, uh, the little track that's in there, it's silver. You can see um, on the eBay one, that's actually coated in some sort of black material. I don't know if it's anodized or what it is, but um, it's not coated. You can see it on that side too. So that is the Amazon one, and I don't know why it's that way and the other one's a different way, but what I will say is I thought that was the problem with this thing locking up. So whenever I first got this, I was just kind of playing with it, you know, moving it back and forth and everything seemed very solid lock up wise. And then all of a sudden it just got to the point where it locked up and I could not get it out of this open position. I was muscling the thing, trying to get it to come out of there. And I don't know if the detent was stuck or there's a piece of like maybe a piece of metal or sliver of metal or something from the manufacturing process that got caught in there. I don't know, but I couldn't move it. I got one of the guys from work to try to mess with it. Um, and he was, he's, he used to be a football player. Dude's just jacked. He looks kind of like the rock, but uh, he couldn't move it either. And so I was like, well, that's not good. So I hosed it down with some WD-40 and some silicone spray, you know, in those areas where the detents are to try to loosen it up. That loosened it up where I could move it fine, but that told me that this needs lubrication. I don't know if it's just aluminum on aluminum seizing or what it is, but just know that it, whenever you get one of these, um, I would put grease on the inside. And I don't know if you can see it in there or not. There's a little bit of red. I don't know. Let me use the light. So you can see that red kind of in there. I just used some uh, high temp grease from Walmart that I put on a lot of different stuff. And I put it down in that hole. I put it down in that hole, same on both sides. And then I put it in the track down inside there and just kind of moved it around. And now I've done this hundreds of times and it has not um, seized up again. So it does need some sort of grease in there. They should do that from the factory. But again, this is only about $60. I think it's 55 bucks on Amazon. And then the one over there from eBay is about 60, $10 of that was shipping. So for 50, 60 bucks, I mean, you really can't complain. Just put a little grease on there. I would use something thicker than CLP or gun grease or gun uh, oil. You're going to want something that kind of sticks in there. And again, since I've done that, I haven't had any problems. The lockup on this one actually feels a little bit more solid than the lockup on that one. And could be springs, could be quality control. I don't know. But the lockup on that one over there is still good. But what I will say is this one, um, well, let me show you the, the little feature on here. So it does have a locking um, QD mount. So whenever this goes down, you'll see it. I'm assuming it'll focus. There it goes. So it does have this little locking feature here. So you press down on the lever and then it'll unlock. It works solid. I don't have any issues with it specifically. Um, the machining on this one like, is slightly different, which I think means that this mount is actually for the other EOTech knockoff that they make. But this little hole right here that they the lightning cut is slightly smaller. Um, there's a few other differences, but one difference up here is with this mount. Now this top part right here where the screws interface, um, with that EOTech, they do line up. Um, but it caused the EOTech to be slightly too far forward. So it was actually flush with this end because the EOTech, you know, the, uh, your eye is over here and then the front of the, the optic is over here and it's supposed to fold down like this out of the way. And so you'd be looking at like this from the rear, um, obviously because this piece of metal right here would be blocking the lens in the folded position. 
Um, a problem I had with this one was the EOTech would not um, collapse all the way into this locked position. And it's because it was too far forward. So what I ended up doing was I took off, there's two little screws holding on this little cap. And so I took those off and then that allowed it to actually fold down most of the way because that it was actually those little turret caps that were interfacing or hitting this metal body. And I'm not gonna take all that off to show you again. That's too much work, but just take my word for it. It was interfacing with it to where it wouldn't lock down. So I would only be able to lock it down to about maybe here. Um, so it wasn't completely out of the way. And that was super annoying because this one's supposed to work with the G33 EOTech knockoff. And so I took those off and it kind of locked in place, but then I realized it, it was very, very close. It was technically down, but not the detent wasn't in the little hole. So then I took off the little EOTech sleeve that comes with it, the uh, the rubber sleeve, and then, then it worked but just again, fine. But again, without the uh, turret caps, you know, where you can adjust it, it's kind of annoying. You'd have to put one of those in your pocket or put it, you know, in like the pistol grip or in the little storage or something so you can have something to turn those turrets if you ever need to. Is that a big deal? I mean, not really, but it's kind of annoying to have to basically disassemble that entire thing just to have it work with this. And because of that, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna return it, it's not a big deal, but I decided to go ahead and order one off eBay to see if maybe this one was just a fluke, maybe something, these holes were drilled out of spec or something. Um, but what I found out whenever I got that one is the top hole mounts up here, they make two different versions. And this one, even though it says it's for the G33 model, it's actually, I believe, for the other one. And I'll show you the differences here so you can kind of see that. All right, I have no idea if this rifle is going to stay on this little thing, but you can kind of see this here, what I'm talking about. You can see the difference. Uh, the lower one is actually a little bit longer, and these screw holes right here are perfectly round, versus on these, they're actually oval to allow for more adjustment. And then this piece right here is more of a rectangle versus this one's more of a square. So that told me, okay, well, these are made different, and they should have advertised this one as for the other EOTech. They just advertised it wrong or the wrong one was in the package, I don't know. Maybe you order one from Amazon and you'll get this one instead of this one, I don't know. So I don't know who made the mistake, but either way, this one's going back and this one worked just fine. Now I will say there was a little bit of interference. Um, whenever it goes down, you can hear that. It's actually a very solid lockup. Um, the turrets though, if there was any less space, it would not lock up. So I would actually prefer them to either make this slightly higher the entire mount or something but uh it still locks up you can hear that's a very solid lock up and you can hear it kind of less it still locks in an up position but it's not as solid as the down position um which you could argue is probably better because whenever it's down you don't want it flopping all over the place whenever it's up you're going to be shooting it. and again it would it'd be difficult um to knock that out of place and whenever you're going to be using a magnifier, uh, you're probably going to be prone or something, you know, benched or something where it's not actually bumping against stuff. And whenever you're running around, it's probably going to be down here out of the right. way. I do not have a good way to do this other than kind of awkwardly hold the camera in the background behind here. But this is with it in the folded position. And the little turret there actually kind of makes contact with the receiver just barely. Um, that's not a big deal, but you can see the red dot just fine. It's completely folded out of the way, which is nice. All right, now I will say one of the things that does seem a little flimsy is this little, not the lever itself, but this part. You can tell, I don't know, it's just not the most secure ever, and it's just because all it's holding in place is there's two springs. There's one here and there's one here that kind of holds this in place. Now, whenever it's locked down, it, it doesn't move, and you can make this tighter by pressing in on this backside, and you can see that little screw comes out, and all you do is just when it's pushed through all the way, you just turn it left or right to tighten it, and then obviously it'll pop back in place and not move anymore whenever it's down. So that's not a big issue. And again, just to kind of show you how this works, it doesn't move until you push down on this lever, which allows it to QD. If you guys have any questions, again, uh, feel free to put them down below. I'll try to comment, uh, or, well, I'll answer any questions y'all have and I'll read, you know, provide all the comments. Um, but so far, I would say this is definitely a recommend. If nothing else, it would give you a good test bed to see if you actually like, like say you already have this EOTech magnifier and you're wanting to test out the uh, Unity riser without spending $250, just to kind of see if you like this riser along with this, you know, this combo. Because again, this was like 30 bucks. This was, you know, like 60. So for $90, you can get both risers instead of spending, you know, $350 to $400. And then you can kind of see if you like them. And if you do, and you like these well enough, keep them. 
Or if you want to order the real thing later on, put them on your rifle, that's fine. Then put these on a you know backup gun or something because not every gun has to have super expensive Gucci stuff. But anyways, hopefully you appreciate this and I hope you all have a good one.